we're at Mojave, California, where a good crowd has gathered to wish our superhero well. It is here at this isolated desert airport, located 90 miles north of L.A., where the human fly, who claims to be the greatest daredevil in the world, will ride on the outside of a giant DC-8 jetliner. Unlike other great comic book heroes, the human fly is alive, he's real, and today you will see a new comic book superhero in the making. sunny day at the Mojave Desert and our daredevil approaches with his trusty sidekick Mercury at the wheels of the fly cycle here he comes the human fly who today will stand atop a DC-8 and thunder off at 300 miles an hour on the greatest, fly, it looks I'm like a do beautiful it day beautiful day and I'm going to prove to the world that I am the greatest superhero that ever lived and will ever live so the human fly now We'll go over to the airplane that you see parked on the runway. It is a DC-8, 200,000 pounds to be thrust forward by four jet engines. And the human fly will be strapped in atop that plane. He will be in the air for approximately 20 minutes. And what a beautiful day in California to be buzzing around. today. Those comments by his pilot bring vivid memories to the human fly. Only six months ago in Dallas, Texas, the human fly was seriously injured when he made an attempt at reaching 300 miles per hour on the outside of that big jet. The aircraft ran into a sudden rainstorm and said the fly, those raindrops at 250 miles per hour felt like stones. They cut through my leather protective suit and almost tore me to shreds. The human fly was hospitalized for two weeks and remained at home convalescing for two months thereafter. But today, he's ready. He's ready to try it for the third time because if he's successful, he's off to bigger and better feats in the future. Why does he do it? Well, the fly says it's to inspire youngsters confined to hospital beds and wheelchairs. It seems that the fly himself spent four years in a hospital following an automobile accident in which his family was killed. The fly's injuries were to have left him a cripple for the rest of his life. Well, he proved doctors wrong, because not only is he walking today, but jogging. The fly says that he jogs each morning for five miles with his aide and longtime friend Mercury. If I can do it, says this man, so can others. And this is his underlying message and written into his contract with Human Fly Spectaculars Limited, the company that finances and manages the project, this firm agrees to allow the fly to visit children's hospitals in the city that he is visiting. And in this case, it's Los Angeles, California. The Human Fly's show costume never fails to excite his audience. The bright red colors, the rhinestones, and the mystique thrills youngsters and adults alike. His face is never seen, and very few people know who he really is. The fly says that he doesn't want to draw attention to himself, but instead to that comic book superhero that he is trying to create. 
and Marvel Comics, incidentally, has just launched a new series called The Human Fly. It will be based on the true life story of the human fly, and it is the first comic book series ever that has been released on the life of a real comic book hero. The human fly wears absolutely no protective equipment other than his leather suit, which is different from his promotional costume, and a helmet required by the FAA. The brace to which he is secured is also FAA approved. It is not a test of the brace, but of the human fly's mental and physical endurance. And at today's attempt of 300 miles per hour, the fly will be exposed to enough pressure to crush his chest. In fact, doctors claim that he will not survive. Will he survive? The answer to that question is on everyone's mind here today. Born in Montreal, Canada, this 29-year-old who aspires to be the greatest daredevil in the world has already proved doctors wrong when he stepped out of his wheelchair many years ago. 
It was during this period of hospitalization that the human fly concept was born. With little to do during this period, the human fly had plenty of time to read comic books and to watch television. And it was through this medium that the human fly was first exposed to the antics of Evil Knievel. Today, before our cameras, you will see the human fly attempt to reach 300 miles per hour. Pilot Clay Lacey, who's flown for the human fly since the project began, will make two flybys before the spectators here today. The first flyby at 200 miles per hour will be executed 20 feet above the ground. The aircraft will then bank, climb to 1,500 feet, and then reposition itself for the second flyby, this time at 250 miles per hour. If all systems are go, and this will be indicated by Lacey if he rocks the plane, he will apply enough power to the engines to bring that aircraft to 300 miles per hour. And when this occurs, there's no turning back. Many have called the human fly crazy, a fool. They question his motives for taking such chances with his life. It's really only the people that are close to him, that really know him, who understand the real reasons. It is said, incidentally, that the human fly donates a good portion of his revenue to charitable and research organizations throughout the world. Perhaps this stems from that auto accident many years ago. Breathing is the, uh, one of the hardest things that I must concentrate. I've never uh, practiced breathing at 300 miles per hour. It's very new to me. It's going to be very difficult to breathe at 300 miles per hour. I think for the uh, duration of time at 300 miles an hour, I'm going to be uh, holding my breath. It's going to be, there's going to be tons of pressure on my chest. And uh, I've never tried it at 300 miles an hour. I've done some training in the wind tunnel, but uh, when you're on top of the plane, it's not like a wind tunnel. You had problems in Dallas briefly. What were they? Well, in Dallas, um, it was a sunny day when we started, but once we got in the air, we hit a thunder shower. When you're on top of that plane, the sh thunder shower, let me tell you, you never think you're going to get off that plane again. The uh, rain pelts were hitting me, I'd say, as hard as rocks. They ripped right through my leather suit. They lacerated my body. I had burns all over my body. I was in terrible condition. I fell unconscious, and I almost died. Fly, why do you do this? Well, I had a serious accident uh, about five, six years ago. It's been a dream of mine for the past five years. Well, I was in the hospital. I saw conditions that I've never seen before. Doctor said I never walk again. I walked again through my own aggressiveness and through the grace of God. And I had a dream to become the greatest daredevil that ever lived. And you will see today that I am the greatest daredevil that ever walked on this globe. In the Fly's many radio and television interviews, he's often been asked about children emulating or attempting some of his feats. His answer to that quite simply is, who can go out and buy a DC-8 jet and ride on the outside? The managing company is concerned about this aspect of the project 
and it is quick to point out that all of the Fly's Daredevil spectaculars are well planned and engineered. The company says also that it takes a professional to complete these events and it makes certain that this message comes through. Lacey is rocking the plane. All systems are go. The fly will attempt a 300 mile per hour flyby. is it. There he goes. Well, the aircraft has done it. It's reached 300 miles per hour. But has the fly? We still don't know what the effects of that extreme pressure has on his body. We'll soon find out about the fly's condition and we'll know for sure as the plane comes in for its landing. And if he is alive, this is what a landing looks like from the fly's position on top of that big plane. Well, the fly has made it. It looks like there's no stopping this man. And there he is, waving to his audience. A great superhero at that. And it looks like the human fly just might become the greatest comic book hero that ever lived. That his dreams might be fulfilled. just wonder right now what's going through this man's head. The aircraft now will make a complete turn and move towards his audience that's awaiting him. A victory day for the human fly here at Mojave. And a victory day for the many people behind the project. There he is, the human fly, America's new comic book superhero. Mercury is up here working with him. Obviously, he wanted to 
make sure that there is no problem. They're over now, unstrapping him. It was a beautiful run. Yeah, he's getting out right now. Hey, listen, guys, get out of the basket so we can get in. Sorry, boys. Fly. The fly can't talk. How, how do you feel? He'd like to take some, uh, please, he'd like to take some oxygen. Get him down for some oxygen, Just Mark? Just for two minutes. Okay. And you'll talk to you right back, all right? But you're okay? He's you're fine? Right. My legs he's are burned up pretty bad. He's inside on the bed, on the left side. You got him on the left side of the leg? Okay, we'll get him down now and get some help for him. Great run, Fly. Clay, the key question now is what about the speed for the human fly? Well, I believe uh, when we put the power to it here and pushed out that we were up uh, near 300. Jack here, uh, we had a measured course out there, and he was checking the speed. In fact, he has a calculator here on it right now. How does it look? Jack? I think we were right at 300, Clay. I haven't had a chance to uh, take the temperature into consideration yet, but I'd say we were right at 300 miles an hour on the uh, measured course. Clay, is this the limit? Well, who knows what the limit for the fly is, you know. It, uh, it's not the airplane limit, but uh, I doubt that many uh, men have uh, stood up faster into the wind. There's a lot of pressure on your body, you know, there. You've got a very big airplane, very low. Well, the airplane performed beautifully, and uh, I think that all systems were go on it. I saw no problems. Okay, the human fly now emerging from the ambulance. We've got a nice crowd out here. Near the airstrip, it was not serious. The paramedics told me he had burns on the bottom of his legs. He gets a round of applause here from the crowd. Fly, tell me what happened. What about the burns? Well, traveling at that speed, it's unavoidable. I've never hit speeds like that. The pressure was tremendous. I've proved to the world now that I am the greatest daredevil that ever lived. <laughs> 